Welcome to Bob Wren Stadium here on the banks of the Hawking River for this afternoon's baseball doubleheader between your Ohio Bobcats and the opposing Northern Illinois Huskies. I'm Cade Williams and I'm joined by my partner and colleague Carl Blaylock. And Carl, it's a great day for baseball here in Athens, Ohio. It is. It is a beautiful day for baseball in Athens. It's sunny. The wind is blowing across the diamond. It's a 57 degrees out. Won't be tomorrow. Yeah, no, but for now, no, it's 57 yeah. degrees. Yeah, the first game here, like we said, got a double header. First game will be nine innings. The second game will be seven. We'll be doing those back to back broadcasts here, myself and Carl on those broadcasts today, and let's talk a little bit about both these teams, Carl, the Bobcats heading to the end of this game, they're 5-5 five and five overall, well, the Huskies are 0-11, I mean, this is the first game for Mac player overall, this is the first home game this season for the Bobcats, and if you're you're the Bobcats right here, you you had a good win the other day against a, a Kentucky team, an SEC school that was, almost almost got it away from them as they were up up big early on in that ball game, let the lead slip away. Kentucky snuck back into that ball game, but still pulled out that victory. And the Bobcats looking to continue their win streak and make it three now, because that will make it an official streak, Carl. Yeah, I mean, like any time, any time that you can beat an SEC school in baseball, that's impressive. Even if it's one of the lower teams like Kentucky, I mean, that is baseball, college baseball heaven. Yeah, you're right, right there. there. Exactly yeah. right, Carl. I mean. That if you were beating a school that's definitely down south, that's got the weather, that's got the advantage down there. I mean, the SEC is by far probably the best. I would say personally, the best um, of conference overall to play baseball. And I mean, you got that. You got the Pac-12 pretty solid. The ACC is pretty solid as well, and the Big 12 at that. But I mean, I was looking at the top 25 rankings the other day, and most of those teams were from the from down south there. So the Bobcats looking to travel back up here across the Mason-Dixon line up here in Athens, Ohio, for their first home set here as they'll have a four-game set against the Northern Illinois Huskies. They have a doubleheader today, and then they ha will have a doubleheader on Sunday. And the reason for the doubleheaders both today and Sunday is because we have a little bit of a a little bit of some weather coming in tonight, Carl. I know we were talking about it before the broadcast. A little snow on the way here in March in, in Ohio. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the one thing you can expect out of Ohio in the uh, springtime is you can't expect anything. Yeah, you're right, absolutely I mean, right about that one. It's 60 degrees. It's sunny. Tonight it's going to snow four to six inches. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> and welcome to Ohio. There's, there's no predictability at all with the weather, Carl, and that's why they try to reschedule these games and schedule it around – the weather, as you can see there on your screen, both of these coaches are having meetings with the umpires at home plate. We're about ready to get this ball game underway. And the first thing that I would like to talk about, Carl, is our pitching matchups today. Starting for the Bobcats will be Edward Cut the fourth. This will be his fourth start on the season. He's one and one overall this season with his record in a 3.31 ERA. And that, uh, out of the starters for the Bobcats, he is ranked third in ERA, those that have started a game this season, that being. And if you're cut, I would say, I mean, he's got 16 point, or six, correction, 16 and a third innings pitched so far this season. I would say maybe, you know, try to get a good solid start out of him. He's at a Westlake, California, right-handed pitcher, standing 6'3", or correction, 6 foot 3 inches tall. And cut up there on the mound will be the one throwing here for the Bobcats and yeah I mean he was a first team all Mac and the last time he was out was against uh, UIC he had a, he got a win with seven innings pitched only one earned run only gave up nine hits and nine strikeouts yeah that's a quality start right there Carl I mean looking at his, at his stats right here he's leading the way in strikeouts for the Bobcats he's got 17 strikeouts this season only walked five batters I mean that's a pretty solid stat line and now we'll turn it over to the other side for the Northern Illinois Huskies starting for them up on the mound is the six foot eight lefty out of Rochelle Illinois Kyle Seabach he's a senior for the Huskies and he's 0-2 on the season 5.19 ERA he's pitched 17 and a third and this will also be his fourth start of the season he has 13 strikeouts on the season with seven walks up there. And if you're both of these pitchers, I mean, I would say try to work deep into this ball game. Uh, you know, you want to, you've got a four game set here. You want to make sure that you want to save your arms here over the next two days. I mean, tomorrow having the day off is definitely going to help. But the Bobcats did use four pitchers in their last matchup against Kentucky. And, you know, you want to make sure you have your arms fre fresh for the entire series. Exactly. And that was only two days ago. So that's, that's another thing to keep an eye on is the freshness of the Ohio bullpen and as you can see there on your screen the Bobcats are over there on your left about to break out of their huddle and they will 
march out onto the field, and we're ready to get the home stand started this year, Carl, as there are your Bobcats opening day starters right there. And we are going to step aside here for a second as the national anthem will commence. Welcome back here after the National Anthem. We're about ready to get first pitch underway here at Bob Wren Stadium in beautiful Athens, Ohio. And now we're going to start and talk about the starting lineups here. First, we'll read you off the Northern Illinois Huskies starting lineups going 1-9 to nine as it will be Eric Arado in right field, Matt Barnes in center field, Aaron Harper at third base, Scott Combs behind the dish, Caden Kasabuki, DHing, Malik Peters in left field, Mason Kelly at first, Jack Blazovich at second base, Andre Dimitrov at short, and pitching for the Huskies will be Kyle Seabach. And now we'll set up your defensive us alignment here for the Bobcats. As, like we said, on the mound this afternoon will be Edward Cutt, the fourth. Behind the dish, his battery mate will be Mason Minzy. At first base, it will be Kale Baker. At second, it will be Michael Richardson. At short, it will be Xavier Hendigas and and at third base it will be Colin Casper Bauer in left field it will be Spencer Harbert in center it will be Isaiah Peterson and in right it will be AJ Roush and we are about ready to get first pitch underway as stepping into the box here for the Northern Illinois Huskies will be Eric Arato the right fielder number five here Northern Illinois in their grays and the wind and the pitch and he deals to the plate and that'll be a first pitch strike and we're ready to get this ball game underway starting off hot right there with that good first pitch was Edward Cut. Cut now winds, deals to the plate, ball put into play in the left field up and it'll find the glove of the left fielder for the Bobcats, Spencer Harbert. Ball was tailing toward the line right there but Harbert played that one well and the Bobcats are already got one down here. Northern Illinois in their grays, their away gray uniforms with the black lettering, black numbers on the back and red numbers on the front. Bobcats in their white with the green and black stripe across. It's cut deals to the plate. That'll be a pitch ball out. 1-0 is your count now for the Bobcats. Good pitch there from cut. I thought it may have caught the outside corner, but a little too far for the home plate umpires. Cut deals, winds. Another pitch out and away. 2-0 is your count. Yeah, Cut looks like he wants to get that outside of the plate going. Umpire qu doesn't quite agree with him with the call, but he's put in the same spot. Yeah, trying to paint those corners right there. As he looked like he tried to paint that high and in corner right there, and he misses. Cut working, doing pretty quickly here, I will say. He's a very, wants to control the pace of play, wants to speed it up here. 3 0 count. Cut winds, deals. And that one will be a little low there for the home plate umpire, and that'll be a four pitch walk there for number two, Matt Barnes, for the Northern Illinois Huskies. So he'll be on first here, and now the out a cut will be out of the stretch. Stepping to the plate now for Northern Illinois, number 22, Aaron Harper, the third baseman. Harper taking his time now at the plate 
And the thing about Harper is this season he is a 405 hitter, 390 or correction 242 hitter, 405 OBP and a 394 slugging percentage is now on the stretch is cut. Checks his runner multiple times, taking his time, winds, deals, goes to the plate. Good dig there by catcher Mason Minzy, though. Kept the ball in front of him and kept the runner there at first base. It's five straight balls now for uh, Cut there. Yeah, Edward Cut's going to have to make sure he dials back in right here. He's got to get something across the plate here. Is now Cut comes set at the belt. Deals the home plate. And he'll get that strike there on the inner half of the plate, and it'll be a 1-1 one -one count now. Matt Barnes is on first base. Barnes is five for six for stolen bases this season for Northern Illinois. He leads the team in that category. So now cut comes set and he picks off, pick off attempt over to first base. He will be in there safe is Barnes. Cut now back on the rubber. Getting his signs from his catcher, Mason Minzy. Comes set at the belt now. Cut deals the home plate, and that'll be a strike right down the middle heart of the plate. And now he's got the count in his favor right now. One, two count in favor of Edward Cut here as Aaron Harper is now in a hole. Harper, the third baseman here for Northern Illinois. Cut comes set at the belt. And he pick off the attempt again at first base, trying to get Barnes over there on his toes, but Barnes will get back into first safely. Edward Cut now once again getting the signs from his catcher. Looks over to first base, trying to keep Barnes in check. Comes set at the belt once again. Deals to home plate, and that'll be a ball up and in right there. Now it'll be a 2-2 count. So now Edward Cut getting his signs here once again from the catcher. 2-2 count, one down here, top of the first inning. Cut, pickoff attempt again What first, and he'll be in there safe. A good attempt there from Edward Cut. You get a little bit of a little bit of yaps there from the Northern Illinois dugout. Now he gets his signs once again. Deals the home plate, ball put in play. It'll be a foul ball. Foul the third base bag over there. Way ahead of that one was number 22, Aaron Harper. Seems to be on time here with that swing. And that's something that you want to do right now if you're Edward Cut. Is now the infield for the Bobcats is in middle in or correction double play depth here. Shortstop and second baseman shading towards second base and playing deep in the holes. Two two is your count. Deals to the plate and that ball will be inside there and it'll be a three two count now. Full count here for Edward Cut as he'll try and win this battle right here. He had. He had Aaron Harper in a hole, had him down 0-2, and now Harper's worked the count back up once again. Edward Cut comes set at the belt. And he'll have another attempt over to first base, and Barnes will be in there safely. It's three times already that Cut has gone over to first base to his first baseman, Cale Baker. Baker out of Gehanna, Ohio, and a Central Ohio product. Cut once again comes set at the belt. He'll deliver to home plate, and that will be a ball inside and a walk there from Aaron Harper. That's two straight walks for Cut. That's something we haven't done a lot of this year. Coming in, Cut had 17 strikeouts, but only five walks, but he's already walked two so far today with, with that. Yeah, Cut, he's got to make sure he's dialed in right here this afternoon. You don't want to get down early in this ball game, especially your home opener right here. Not that the Bobcats have had any struggles with putting runs up on the board, I will say, especially with this Northern Illinois pitching staff having an ERA average of 10.29. That is ninth in the MAC as Cut delivers to the plate, and he'll get a strike right down the middle of the plate as he delivered that one to Scott Combs, the catcher. Yeah, the bad, the, some of the back teams have kind of struggled having to play away here. As none of them really can play at home up here in this cold weather in the north in these February and March months here. As there was a pickoff attempt there, nothing going for Northern Illinois as Edward Cut comes set at the belt once again. Runners on first and second here for Northern Illinois. Delivers and a big swing and miss there from number 12, Scott Combs, and he works himself into a hole 0-2 now. 
Combs looked like he was swinging for the fences on that one. Yeah, he was trying to get some, get a big old power swing right there, try to drive in some ribbies for the Huskies. Coming set at the belt once again is cut. He'll deliver to home plate, and he got a runner going. Good delivery there. He'll get in, and he will be safe under the tag right there is Matt Barnes. As that is his sixth stolen base on the season. A little bit of an errant high and in pitch there from Edward Cutt, and a good throw down there from the catcher, Mason Minzy. But it was a little high, and sliding underneath that tag was Matt Barnes. Good strategy there to try to steal third base with the left runner in there, kind of keeping Minzy from really getting a good throwing motion. Yeah, especially if you got a, a right-handed bat at that. It doesn't really bode well for you as a catcher. Is another pickoff attempt there for cut to first base now, and now you've got runners at the corners here for catcher Scott Combs. One down here. If you're Edward Cut, you've got to think of maybe get a double play ball right here. He'll deliver to the plate. Here's a ground ball foul into the Ohio dugout. And he'll battle here once again, number 12, Scott Combs. Combs is behind the dish this afternoon. He's hitting 263 on the season, 318 OBP, and a 316 slugging percentage. That's good for a 634 OPS on the season so far for the first 11 games for the Huskies. This cut will come set at the belt once again. Checking his runners, and he'll deliver a pickoff attempt to first, and getting back safely will be number 22, Aaron Harper. Cut's been very active on trying to pick off these Northern Illinois Huskies on the base paths today. Wants to make sure that they're in check and they're not going to be running rampant on him all afternoon. This cut will come set again. Delivers to the plate. Great pitch right there and a delayed protection swing there from number 12, Scott Combs. Is looked like Cut with, went with a little off-speed pitch right there. Had a, little, had a little break action and it caught Combs off guard. Fouled it off though and he'll, ha he'll stay alive here in the box. 1-2 count here for Scott Combs as he crowds the plate here, trying to protect the outside. Pitch low. They've got a steal attempt. Nothing's no throw at all. And number 22, Aaron Harper will just sort of walk to second base. That's a little bit of it's a little bit of action that I've seen before. Some baseball teams do. Carl is just trying to get caught up in a rundown right there and get an early, early, early lead right there for Northern Illinois. Well, they had him dead to rights. Just nobody, nobody was at second base for Minzy to throw it to. As now Cut will deliver and a little bit of a squib hit right there. It'll get through the middle. And that'll be a run for Northern Illinois. That'll be two, uh, an R two RBI single right there from Scott Combs as he put that ball right on the ground, skipped by the pitcher, Edward Cut, and the shortstop, Xavier Hendages. And that'll be a base hit, and Northern Illinois will take the 2-0 advantage here in the top of the first. Yeah, I mean, just put it right where yeah. the defenders weren't there, Carl. I mean, they weren't really crowding the middle. Put it on the ground, squibbed right in the middle of the infield, and that'll be a two-RBI single. And that's where you also have to keep those runners at bay because if they're going to run, you know, that's going to sit you or correction set you up into bad positions as the first pitch from cut to number 15, Caden Kasabuki is a ball. 1-0 is your count now. Sitting yeah. on first base is Scott Combs. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a rough rough bat there. I mean, it, it was a good at-bat by Combs, grinding it out. Yeah, I mean, Edward Cut right there got ahead in that count, got down to 0-2. I mean, Combs had some protection swings right there, stayed alive, got a pitch that he thought he could poke into the, some grass out there, and it found the grass that was, and that would be a base hit. That's Cut now, 1-1. One, one. Kasabuki. Ball in play, ground ball to the shortstop. Fields it to second base and on to first, and that'll be a 6-4-3. Taylor made double play there for the Ohio Bobcats, and they will get out of the inning right there. Northern Illinois scores two there in the top of the first, and you are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network.
Welcome back here to Bob Wren Stadium. It'll be the bottom of the first here as the Ohio Bobcats will step up to the plate here. Pitching on the mound for Northern Illinois is the big lefty, number 18, Kyle Seabach. Seabach is out of Rochelle, Illinois. Stands six feet, eight inches tall, a senior for the Huskies. Seabach has a 5-1-9 ERA. He's pitched 17 and a third so far to start this season for Northern Illinois. And now the leadoff batter for the Bobcats will be number five, Isaiah Peterson, the center fielder, lefty hitter. Something I want to notice about Peterson so far is he is has a 425 average right now with a 538 OBP and a 525 slugging percentage. The first pitch there dealt inside for a ball from Seabach. Yeah, Peterson's coming off a pretty big game against Kentucky. He was 3 for 5 with two runs, an RBI, and a walk. I mean, if you have an OPS, his OPS is over one as that ball is slicing foul and will get out of play right there. A little behind that one was Peterson. And like I was saying about Isaiah Peterson, I mean, his OPS right now is 1.03, or correction, 0 .1, oh, correction 1 1.063. I had to correct myself multiple times there. But if you have an OPS over one, Carl, hey, you're, you're definitely an impressive hitter right there. The pitch deals, a little bit of a check swing. They'll say no swing right there as it'll be a ball out to one count now to Peterson. I mean, you saw the power that he has just on that foul ball there. I mean, it was it was a solid contact. He just got a little bit behind it. But, I mean, if he gets that in play, that's an easy double. You're exactly right there, Carl. It's another ball there from Seabach, and he'll be down on the count now. 3-1 to Peterson. Peterson has four doubles on the season. He leads the team with 17 hits and 13 runs, especially being the leadoff bat here for the Bobcats. He's out of Lincoln, Nebraska as well. Pitch now and pulls that one. High and deep, and I believe it will get foul out of play. That, that ball was was tail and foul, but, I mean, Peterson got some good wood on that one. If he puts that one between the sticks, that's extra bases for sure there, Carl. And that's the second one. He's popped like that, too. So Seems like he's got Seabach timed up really well here. Now the count will run full for Kyle Seabach. Comes set at the belt, out of the stretch. High kick, deals to the plate. Slicing toward the left field line, and that ball will get down foul. There for Isaiah Peterson. Count stays full, battling in the box now is Peterson. Peterson, a 5'11", fifth-year senior, as we said, out of the Lincoln, Nebraska. He was the 2017 Nebraska Baseball Player of the Year as he deals inside, Ooh. and that one will run way in and catch Peterson right there, and he'll walk his way. A little bit of a soft rather than a hard 90 down to first base there as Peterson is. I would be very wary if I was Peterson dealing with a lefty, especially one in Seabach who has a high kick. He doesn't seem like he has much of a slide step. He's out of the stretch, though. As now stepping to the plate for the Bobcats will be number 15, Alex Finney, the designated hitter on the afternoon today for the Bobcats. Finney is hitting 345, 475 on base percentage, and a 379 slugging. That's good for an 854 OPS. Fouls that one way back behind that one was Finney. Finney out of Oxford, Michigan. He's a junior standing 5 feet 10 inches tall. As Seabach comes set at the belt here, Texas runner, he'll kick and fire to the plate. That'll be a ball out, 1-1 one, one count now. Seabach probably looking to get a double play ball right here. Crowding the middle are the Huskies' middle infielders. Kicks and fires to the plate. Fouled back once again there by number 15, Alex Finney. Finney has 10 hits, 7 RBIs, 4 runs, and a double on the season as well as six walks and four strikeouts here. Now he's worked himself into a whole one-two count. Fires to the plate to Seabach. Ball put in play, slicing toward the left. Dead center, though, and it's played well, and that'll be the first out there for the Northern Illinois Huskies. Good play in center there by Matt Barnes as he tracked that one down, played it well, had good positioning off the bat, and he'll get that for the first out. For the Huskies, is now stepping to the plate is the three-hole behind the dish, number 10, Mason Minzy for the Bobcats. Minzy so far this season hitting 250, 311 on base percentage, 425 slugging. That's good for a 736 OPS. 
He leads the team in doubles with seven and 12 RBIs leading the way as well. It's from Br Grand Blanc, Michigan, as he steps into the box, box here. Seabach kicks to the plate, fires to the plate, correction, and that'll be a ball out. Seabach seems like he's trying to work that outside part of the plate. I mean, when he faced Peterson there and he, and he hit him there on that 3-2 pitch, Seems like he's dealing more so on the outer half of the plate for righties and the inner half, uh, or correction, inner half of the plate for lefties. As that ball was a little foul action there. Almost got into play and a good pop up there by the catcher Scott Combs for Northern Illinois to try and get a double play there, but it'll be a foul ball. Count will run to 1-1. One, one. Isaiah Peterson on first here for the Bobcats. 1-1 one, one count. One down here in the bottom of the first inning. The score is 2 to nothing in favor of the Northern Illinois Huskies. Fires to the plate. And once again, working the outer half of the plate there is Seabach. That'll be a ball out. 2-1 count now. Seabach, as I said, a big, tall lefty. Your prototypical tall lefty, that is, that's up there dealing on the mound. Seems like he's got a good bit of a... Off-speed stuff as he comes set, fires to the plate, tries to hit that outside corner, and he does there. Painted that corner. So now the count will run to 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, Men Menzies been on a bit of a hot streak lately, had six RBIs in the last two games. As now Menzies will step into the box here once again, 2-2 two, two count. Seabach comes set at the belt. Menzies will step out of the box. For those of you that are watching, we are experiencing some technical difficulties. We only have audio right now. We will make sure to update you on the video once we get that all situated, as that will be another ball out there. Full count now. Seabock, like I said, trying to work the outs outer half of the plate here for Northern Illinois. As Mason Minzy here, he's worked the count full. Like you said, Carl Minzy coming into this game on a hot streak. Goes, and that'll be a ball out. Oh! No, strike three called. Late call right there. And Minzy will take a spot on the bench as he painted that outer half of the plate there was number 18, Kyle Seabach. And that'll be a strikeout looking for Mason Minzy. And on that pitch, Isaiah Peterson took off for second base, and he got in there safely as that will be his third stolen base on the season, leading the way for the Bobcats. That was a really, really delayed call. I mean, you could he hear He painted that corner, though, Carl. Painted that outside corner perfectly. He did paint that corner, but, man, that was about five seconds. As now the ball is squibbed out to shortstop. Good sliding play there. Throw across the diamond, and it won't be in time, as that'll be an infield hit right there for Colin Casperbauer, the third baseman for the Bobcats. That's an infield single right there. Now we've got runners at the corners here for the Bobcats. Stepping into the plate now is number four, Spencer Harbert, playing left this afternoon. Two down here for Northern Illinois. Yeah, the redshirt senior has one RBI in the year, hoping to add to it here. If he can get something in the green, that would be perfect here for the Bobcats. You want to make sure you get it out of the infield, tr or if you do have it in the infield, try to dig it out and get an infield hit here. Coming set at the belt is Seabach. He'll fire to the plate. And that'll be low and away ball. Like we said, Seabach trying to pound that outer half of the plate here, trying to get that corner like he, he did against Menzi. He painted that right there, got the strike three looking call. So come set here. No fire to the plate. And that'll be low once again, 2 0 count for number four, Spencer Harbert. Harbert is from Middletown, Delaware. He's hitting 125 on the season, 250 on base percentage, 292 slugging. As Seabach comes set at the belt once again. Checks the runner at first. No fire to the plate. Ball fouled off there by Harbert. And will go out of play. 2-1 is your count here. 2-0 here in the top of the first. Both teams have... Bottom of the first. Co bottom of the first. Correction there, Carl. <laughs> As the Bobcats are playing here at Bob Wren Stadium. This beautiful Friday afternoon doubleheader action here. Seabach fires the plate once again. Ball put into play into the right field. That is deep. That is carrying out to right field, and that ball will be gone. See you later. 
as that'll be an oppo poppo home run there for Spencer Harbert. He got all of that baseball, hit it out to the right center field gap and over the head of the right fielder, Eric Arado. And the Bobcats will take a three to two lead right now on the bottom of the first. Got a pitch that he liked, threw it right down the middle part of the plate. And that's not what you want to see if you're Kyle Seabach and giving up that home run right there is not something you want if you're the Northern Illinois Huskies. I mean, they had him, they had they had runners at the corners with two down, gave him a, a pitch right across the center of the plate, and Harbert made him pay. Now Seabach will fire once again to the plate, and that'll be a strike one there to number eight, Michael Richardson playing second this afternoon. Yeah, I mean the ball the ball just flew over uh, right center. He got a hold of it. Yeah, he did. I mean, it was it looked good off the bat. Carl was traveling out there to right center field. The right fielder out there, Eric Arado, was already moving back. Yeah, once the ball came off the bat and traveled all the way out there and beyond the fence. As now Seabach will deal, and that'll be fouled back there from Richardson. He's down now, one two. And that's only Count. that's only the second. Uh, that's only the second home run that Seabach's given up on the year even though he's got the 5.19 ERA. Yeah, you are right about that as the ball is fouled there from Richardson. He seems to be timing up Seabock well here, even though he's down in the hole with two strikes here. And Harbor, that was his second home run on the season as he will now take the lead for the Bobcats in that category as Seabock delivers to the plate and a good hold there from Richardson. It'll be a ball low. Count now runs to 2-2. Two -two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, 3-2 score in favor of the Ohio Bobcats here in the bottom of the first inning. Kyle Seabach on the mound here for the Northern Illinois Huskies. In the box is Michael Richardson for the Bobcats. Deals, fires to the plate, ball put into play up high, dead center field, and that'll be tracked down and into the glove of number two, Matt Barnes, and that will end the bottom half of the inning. Bobcat strike there with a three-run shot from number for Spencer Harbert, and they will take a 3-2 lead. You are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. Welcome back here to Bob Brenn Stadium. We're getting ready to start the top of the second inning here. 3-2 is your score in favor of the Ohio Bobcats. And stepping into the box here for Northern Illinois is Malik Peters playing left field this afternoon as cut deals, delivers to the plate, and that'll be a strike on the outer half of the plate. 0-1 count now. Is Edward Cut on the mound here for the Bobcats once again to start the second. The wind and the pitch. Hits the outer half of the plate right there, and the home plate umpire is definitely giving both of these teams the outer half this afternoon as now Malik Peters works himself into a whole 0-2 count. Cut will slow it way down here. Fires to the plate, and it'll go low for a ball. 1-2 count. Yeah, something interesting about Cut. His family's pretty good at sports. Uh, his sister, Annie, on the water polo team at UC Davis. As he delivers a good off-speed pitch there, looked like a slider to me from here, and Slid way out of the out of the box and almost got Peters to chase there, but he'll hold off. 2-2 two -two count now for Edward Cut. Turns, kicks, and fires to the plate. Ball put in the play up the middle. Malik Peters fielded well by the second baseman. Turns, throws, fires, and safe as Peters digs out an infield single right there as the throw was not in time from Colin Casperbauer out there. Correction. 
Michael Richardson out there at second base as he tried to throw off his back foot and didn't get it out in time, and that'll be a base hit for Malik Peters. Richardson tried to get it out of the gap there, and he, he did a good job of Tough getting play. it. He, he did a good job of getting it, keeping it in the infield, making sure it wasn't anything more than a single, but it, it was too much of a play to try to balance all of his weight back as they're going to be bunting. Now, well, yeah, that was a bunt there from number 25, Mason Kelly, playing first on the afternoon today. It looked like they were trying to get a sacrifice and get Peter into sc Peter's correction into scoring position. As Edward Cut towing the slab this afternoon, he'll be out of the stretch here. Gets his signs from Minzy. He'll come set at the belt. Checks his runner at first, that is Peters. And he'll fire over first, and getting back in safely will be Peters. As I've said so far, Carl, I mean, Edward Cutt has made sure to keep his runners on, on their toes this afternoon. He's had a lot of pickoff attempts, especially over there at first base. Yeah, he has. And so far, so far it's done a pretty good job. Well, we've had two stolen bases. True, true. But Seems like he's trying to keep the runners honest over there as he went over to uh, over to his first baseman, Kale Baker, once again. But Peters will get back in safe as Cut now comes set at the belt once again. He'll fire to home, a bunt attempted once again from Mason Kelly, but it'll work itself foul, and he's worked himself into an 0-2 count now. Yeah, I can't much bunt if you got two strikes on you. You don't want to risk the out. Unless you're an absolute stud at bunting, I mean. Well, considering he sent two foul. I wouldn't risk I trying thought. to do the third. Yeah, I think I think they'll let him swing here as he's into an 0-2 count now. Malik Peters on first. No outs here in the top of the second. Set at the belt as Edward Cut. He'll deliver. And that pitch will run high. 1-2 count now. Edward Cut now once again getting the signs from his catcher and battery mate this afternoon, Mason Minzy. Checks his runner at first, and he'll come set at the belt. Cut will fire to home plate. That ball will be in play, but foul. There behind it, tried to go op opposite field. There was Mason Kelly, the first baseman for the Huskies. Kelly on the season so far, hitting 194, 297 OBP, 194 slugging percentage. Set him out, Washington, Kentucky. Coming set at the belt is Cut. He'll deliver over to first base once again. Pickoff attempt and getting in there safely will be Malik Peters. I will say, while there has been stolen bases, that's been more because of uh, Just what's been going on around. True. It, it Cut's done a good job of keeping them honest. and He'll deliver here once again at the plate, and he'll get Mason Kelly out on this front foot, and he will strike out swinging there. And that's a strikeout there for Edward Cut. As now stepping to the plate here for Northern Illinois will be number eight, Jack Blazevich. Cut, Blake. Cut. Correction, Carl. You can you can go here. Cut, cut's done a good job of keeping him honest. I mean, I I think we could catch a few more catch stealings as long as people are ready. Yeah, as Cut delivers over there to first base once again, another pickoff attempt. They always say never three, but he went three last time. As now Cut will get signs once again from Minzy. In the box now, Jack Blazevich, sophomore out of Woodridge, Illinois, and that'll be a strike right down the heart of the plate. As Blazevich took that one. Blazevich, like I said, a sophomore out of Woodridge, Illinois, standing six feet tall, hitting 136 on the season, 208 on base percentage, 136 slugging. This cut comes set at the belt here once again. He'll check the runner, and he'll fire over to first once again. Like they say, never three. He's gone twice, and he went three last time. He's keeping Peters honest over there at first. Now one thing to keep an eye on for cut is he's already got 31 pitches in just one and a third innings. Yeah, you want to keep your pitch count down as he gets a swinging strike there from Jack Blazevich. As Blazevich was trying to put that ball into play, but swung right under it. 0-2 count now for Blazevich. Blazevich, 344 OPS on the season, hitting under the Mendoza, Mendoza line. There's another pitch there, and that'll be a swinging strikeout. Two on the inning now for Edward Cutt. As he gets a strike out there from number eight, Jack Blazevich, and he'll walk back to the dugout, and Peters will still be on first. Is now stepping to the box is Andre, Andre Dimitral, the shortstop for the Husky. Dimitral, 167 average on the season so far. 
as Cut delivers to the plate, and that ball will be low there for a ball. 1-0 count. Dimitro out of Rochester, Michigan. Sophomore standing 5 foot 10 inches tall. Playing shortstop this afternoon. Coming set at the belt once again is Cut. He'll deliver to the plate, and that'll be a strike on the outer half of the plate. Like we said, home plate umpire behind there this afternoon is liking the outer half of that plate. Hey, Kate, do you know what else is around Rochester, Michigan? What is that, Carl? The Michigan International Speedway, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah that is right. Up there, up there, in the, up there in the hills. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, is a pickoff oh, attempt, and oh, oh, that was close over there, and the Bobcat dugout thought they got him. But Malik Peters got back into first safely right there. If I was Peters at this point, I'd, ju I'd just keep one foot ready to go towards the bag. Oh, yeah, of course. He cuts the throat over there about every single pitch. Of course. <laughs> now cut will deliver to the plate. Good off-speed action right there, and that will be on the outer half of the plate for a strike. <laughs> Peters, was, Peter, Peters listened to my advice. As soon as he started winding up, he started going back towards the bag <laughs> and not towards second base. Yeah, Peters is, Peters is on his toes over there at first base. One-two count now for Edward Cut. So come set at the belt here once again. Checks his runner, he'll deliver. Peters takes off, and that'll be a base hit. Good hit and run action there as Peters will round second, head to third, and he will get into third safely, and there it is. Great hit and run there, executed perfectly by Andre Dimitrov as he hit it to the backside of the field there, got in the gap between the first and the second baseman. While the second baseman was trying to cover the bag, and Peters will work himself to third. Now we've got runners on the corners with the leadoff hitter, Eric Arado, playing right field this afternoon, stepping up to the plate. He batted last inning, and he just flew out to left field. So Bobcats open, he'll do that again. He has cut already. Ready to get the signs from his catcher, Mason Minzy. Runners at the corners here once again. Northern Illinois looking to strike here as he delivers to the plate, and that'll be a strike and a fake throw down there and a stolen base from number one, Andre Dimitro. As no attempted throw there from the Bobcats. It looks like they're just trying to get a ball in play and to get out of this inning right here. So now we've got two runners in scoring position on second and third now for the Huskies. Once again, striking, knocking on the door here. As Cut comes set at the belt. He'll deal with the plate, and that'll be a ball low in the dirt and a good block there from the catcher, Mason Minzy. As Edward Cut will once again... Get his signs from Minzy. 1-1 one, one count here for Eric Arado playing right field this afternoon. He's come set at the belt and he'll deliver to the plate and that'll be a strike on the outer half of the plate. Strike looking. Great pitch there from Edward Cutt. And like I've said, they've been working both teams so far this afternoon have been working that outer half of the plate and they've been getting those calls all afternoon. 1-2 count now for Edward Cutt in the box. Eric Arado. Cut comes set at the belt here once again. He'll deal fire to the plate, and that'll be a swinging strike and caught there and a strikeout as Cut will strike out three batters in this inning, and he'll get out of the inning as he'll limit Northern Illinois to no runs, and the Bobcats maintain a 3-2 advantage heading into the bo or bottom of the second. You are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. Welcome back here to beautiful Athens, Ohio, as we're about to get the bottom of the second underway here. Ohio Bobcats leading this, the game here 3-2 to two 
as stepping into the plate here is the first baseman, Kale Baker, number 50, out of Gehanna, Ohio. That's into Gehanna Lincoln High School. Seabach will deliver to the plate, and that'll be a ball high. 1-0 count now. Seabach, well, both of these pitchers actually this afternoon are working pretty quickly. Something you sometimes see from pitchers, especially nowadays, with the ideas of pitch clock and whatnot coming into effect, is that'll be a ball once again low. There to Kale Baker. Baker, a grad student, standing six feet tall, currently hitting, her currently posting a 038 batting average on the season. Seabach will fire to the plate once again, and that ball will get out foul. It will be a 2-1 count now for Kale Baker. Baker so far in this season only has one hit, two RBIs, one run, four walks on the season, and nine strikeouts. His OPS is 194 on the season. Firing to the plate to Seabach, and that ball will be put into play, working toward left center field, but tracked down well out there by Matt Barnes. Played that well, solid defensively in center field is Barnes as he tracked that one in the gap down perfectly, played it well, shaded toward the left center field gap, and that'll be out number one for the Huskies. As now stepping to the plate for the Bobcats will be number seven, A.J. Roush, playing right field this afternoon for the Bobcats. Roush out of Powell, Ohio, attended Owen Tangy Liberty, another Central Ohio product here. A red shirt freshman, standing 5'11", feet tall. And try to get a bunt for a hit right there, and that ball will be into the other's batter's box, and that'll be ball one. 1-0 one is your count here for Kyle Seabach. Delivering to number seven, A.J. Roush. So he'll fire, and a good ball right there in the left center field gap, but tracking it down is Malik Peters. He'll catch it at the track, bump his way into the outfield wall and that will be out number two as the Bobcats have tried to hit that left center field gap but nothing's found the grass so far this afternoon or correction this inning as two fly outs here to start this bottom of the second is now stepping to the plate for the Bobcats will be number three Xavier Hindigiz Hindigiz playing shortstop this afternoon number three and he gives out of Salem, Indiana. And Seabach will deliver to the plate. And a good pitch there for a strike. That will find its way into the mitt of Scott Combs, who's behind the dish this afternoon. And it is a 345 hitter. And that'll be strike number two, as that'll find the outer half of the plate. As now working himself into a hole is Hendages. Like I said, 345 hitter on the season. Currently has an OPS of 746. As Seabach will deal, and he will not get that strike three call right there, and that'll be a ball in the outer half. One, two is your count. Crowding the plate now is Hendigiz. Coming set at the belt. Seabach, and he'll get a swing and a miss right there, and a tag from Matt. The correction, Scott Combs, and that'll be out number three, and that'll be the end of the second inning. The score is three to two in favor of the Ohio Bobcats, and we'll be back for the top of the third. Third, you'll be listening, or you are listening to correction, Ohio baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. Welcome back here to Bob Wren Stadium. 
You are listening to Ohio Baseball here as Edward Cutt will deliver to home plate. And that'll be a ball high there as stepping into the box is number two, Matt Barnes. Barnes walked on four pitches in his first at-bat. His cut will deliver to the plate, and he'll get a strike in there on the inner half of the plate, and the count will now run to 1-1. Yeah, also had a stolen base and scored a run. That was Barnes as Cut delivers to the plate once again. Ball high. 2-1 is your count here. Cut's pitch count now working up a little bit here. He's above 40 so far here in the afternoon at 43 right now. As Cut will deliver to the plate once again. Ball, a little bit of a swing there as it'll be fielded and thrown onto first there by Xavier Hindigas. And that'll be an out. Good solid play. Track that ball down as it got over the head of Edward Cut. A little bit of a defensive swing there. But it'll be an out nonetheless as Barnes has a ground out there. Is now stepping into the, uh, to the box now for Northern Illinois is number 22, Aaron Harper, the third baseman. That was a really good play by Hendigas just to. As it was, tracked it right down from the, ba or correction, from the back of the infield toward the grass and worked himself in, threw on the run, and got the out. It's cut, good pitch there, and it'll catch the outer part of the plate for a strike. 0-1 is your count. Harper in his first at-bat walked. He's he also scored and got a stolen base. That is true. As he was a product of stolen base from Matt Barnes is a big swing there from Harper. Swing and a miss, that is. Now count 0-2. One down here in the top of the third. Cut will turn kick and fire to the plate. Good pitch high and in, but it'll be a ball. Harper just laid off on that one. He 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 did a good job of checking the swing, but that was one that he kind of wanted. Yes, he did. As now Cut will deliver to the plate once again, outer half, a little far out, and that'll be a ball once again, two-two count. Edward Cut now getting the signs from Minzy. Turns, kicks, and fires to the plate, and that'll be a little bit of a defensive swing there. No fielded by Kale Baker, and that'll be an out right there as Baker takes it himself. A put out there for the first baseman out of Gehanna, Ohio, and now it'll be two down here for the Bobcats. Is now stepping into the box for the Huskies is Scott Combs, the catcher. Combs had a two RBI single in his first at bat in this ball game. Is We'll try to get multiple hits on this game here in a second at bat. As Cut will turn, kick, and fire to the plate, and that'll be a strike on the outer half of the plate. Great pitch there by Edward Cut. Something about Combs' stance is he looks to crowd the plate a little bit, not too much, possibly working into some hit-by-pitch territory, and he leans over the plate just a tad. As a pitch there gets away from Minzy, kicks up and hits the backstop all the way up high, but that's the turf. That's the turf that is the <laughs> Yes, Yes, it is. Yes, it is. As The infield here at Bob Wren Stadium is all turf, and I can tell by, from my experience back in my playing days that the turf does make the ball bounce a little bit extra when, you know, unless you're playing on grass, as that will be a strike looking in there. One-two count now for Edward Cut. He'll turn, kick, and fire to the plate, and that'll be a swinging strike three there. And getting out of the inning, good inning there for Edward Cut as the Huskies will go one, two, three. You are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network.
Welcome back here to Bob Wren Stadium on the banks of the Hocking River in beautiful Athens, Ohio. We're in the bottom of the third here of this first game of the doubleheader this afternoon on Friday, March 11th between the Ohio Bobcats and the Northern Illinois Huskies. The first MAC game for either of these teams so far on the season as the Bobcats lead Northern Illinois 3-2 to two here. So now stepping into the box will be leadoff hitter Isaiah Peterson. His first at back, he, he drew a hit by pitch and got over to first base. Eventually scored on that three-run homer. That he did. As a pitch there from Seabock will be a ball out. A little bit of a check swing there, but held back did Peterson. That's a beautiful thing when the start of the inning, when the inning starts at the top of the order. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is, especially – Somebody as efficient at getting on base as Peterson is. is a pitch there and ball hit between the first base gap. But what a play there by first baseman. The first baseman, the number 25, as he'll throw over to the pitcher. Kelly. Kyle Seabach as Mason wow. Kelly made a great diving play there on the turf. Caught that ball in the web of his glove. Threw it over to a running Kyle Seabach. And he gets him out at first base. Great play there. One down here in the bottom of the third. Now stepping into the box is Alex Finney, the DH for the Bobcats. 0 for 1 here so far this afternoon. Seabock will come set at the belt. He'll fire to the plate, and that'll be a ball low. That's something I've noticed so far from some of these Bobcats, and you can see in some of the hit-by-pitches, hit-by-pitch numbers, that is, this season. Is they don't exactly crowd the plate, but they don't they don't stand too far back, I'll say that much, as Seabock will deliver to the plate, and a great rip down the line, but foul. As greatly timed up there by Alex Finney. Hit that down the third baseline, almost hit the umpire down there, but it was just, just foul. Yeah, I remember when I was looking through everything. Uh, Casper Bauer, he got hit by like two hit by pitches in one of the Evansville games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you could see it in some of their stances. Is a ball out there for Finney? I mean, that's something you don't see very often. No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, I mean, unl unless unless they don't like each other. That's but uh, you have that's a little different, Carl. I don't yeah. think we've seen any bench clearing brawls here. That'll be a good pitch from Seabock in the outer half, and that'll get in there for a strike. 2-2, two, two, your count. I mean, like, just natural hit by pitches. I mean, it's it's been a lot for the Bobcats, but they're using it to their, your advantage. I mean, if that's true. If you get close enough to that and they end up hitting you, I mean, that's a that's a that's no different than a walk. It's a base. It's a base. And a walk is almost as good as a hit. As Seabock will deliver to the plate and a little bloop out into left field, but Redwell right into the glove of Malik Peters. And that'll be out number two for the Huskies. There's a little bit of a defensive swing there. Just kind of looped it out into left field. And something that I want to say here about, about the Bobcats and their lead so far is Mason Menzies will step in the box here is that a lot of things a lot of coaches try to preach of ways you, you win ball games is three-run homers. I mean, three-run homers is a great way to get things going. You get guys on base, and that's what the Bobcats did. They got guys on base and set it up perfectly for a three-run homer as now Seabock will deliver to Minzy, and that'll be a strike in there on the inner half of the plate. Minzy's first time up, he uh, struck out looking on a little bit of a questionable call. At least Minzy <laughs> thought it was questionable. It was on the outer half. It was on the outer half. Might have got a little bit of it. Might have been a little outside as that pitch will be way outside for a ball. I mean, it. I mean, it was probably it was a good call, but it was a late call. I true, mean, true. Mincy was halfway to first by the time they called it. Yeah, that is true. Is now, Seabock will deliver once again, and that'll be fouled off way early on. That one was Minzy, and he fouled that off to the to the Bobcats dugout. Oh, it bounced off the front of the dugout and ended it up <laughs> out, out of that left, left field. field. Yeah, the bullpen's got to help him out out there. He puts that one in play. That's a definite base hit. Yes, Probably go is. through one of the NIU players' gloves in the <laughs> infield. <laughs> Seabock will deliver to the plate in a swing. Strike three. Swing and a miss there for Mason Minzy, and that will end the bottom of the third. Your score is still 3-2 in favor of the Bobcats. You are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network.
Welcome back here to some Mac baseball action. The opening game in the opening series here at Bob Wren Stadium between the Ohio Bobcats and the Northern Illinois Huskies. As now we're in the top of the fourth here, Bobcats with the 3-2 advantage and stepping into the box here for Northern Illinois will be number 15, the five-hole Caden Kasabuki. As that pitch will go right down the heart of the plate for a strike right there. Quick inning last time out for uh, Cut. Let's see if he could continue that. As that ball will be lifted out in the right field. Moving back is the right fielder on the track, and that will be into the glove of the right fielder Roush. for the Bobcats. A.J. Roush played that ball well as it was tailing a little bit toward the line right out there, but caught it on the track, and that will be out number one. So now stepping to the plate is Malik Peters, the left fielder as he is one for one on the day, had a base hit last at bat. This cut will deliver to the plate, ball out. That base hit was a hustle bag. Yes, it was, as it was hit up the middle, and Peters got a little bit of speed. He's delivering once again his cut in the outer half, and that'll be a ball out once again. 2-0 is your count. Cut trying to attack the outer part of the plate here for Malik Peters. Edward Cut will turn, kick, and fire to the plate. Another pitch on the outer half, and that one will be a ball. That one looked a little bit closer than the first two, that is, and I'm surprised the home plate umpire didn't give him at least that one, especially since he's been favoring the outer half of the zone this afternoon. 3-0 count here. Cut delivers. That one will go right down the inner half of the plate, and Peters was already moving to first, wanted that 390, but didn't get it. There's now to be a 3-1 count here. Umpire again waited two seconds before making his call. That he did, and that ball will be <laughs> lower away, and Peters wanted to make sure it was a ball before he started jogging <laughs> down to first base. Yeah, uh, froze for a second, made sure. Is it a ball? Be. It's a ball. It okay. was a ball there. <laughs> he'll jog his way down to first base, and he'll be on once again. He's been on base both times, or both of the times he's stepped to the plate this afternoon. Is now stepping into the box is Mason Kelly. First baseman. Third walk for Cut today. That's This is from a guy who normally does not walk very many players. Cut will come set at the belt here, and he'll deliver to the plate. Good off-speed pitch right there, and it'll find its way into Minzie's glove for a strike. 0-1 the count here. Edward Cut probably looking to roll a double play ball right here. Try and get the speedy Malik Peters off the base paths. Cut will come set at the belt once again, and he'll deliver over to first base to Peters as Peters is putting on a little bit of a wrist sliding guard that is right there on his, on his inner sliding hand that is, his right hand that is. As another delivery over first base, good pickoff attempt there from Edward Cut. That one will be not in time as Peters will get back safe once again. Cut comes out at the belt here once again. We'll deliver to the plate and a swing and a miss there from number 25, Mason Kelly, as he's worked himself into a hole now, 0-2 count. One down here in the top of the fourth. The Huskies still looking there for their first win on the season. They played 11 ball games, have yet to win one. This cut comes set at the belt again, tries a pickoff attempt, and that one will be off or not. Peters gets back in safe. And the preseason Matt Coach's poll, the Bobcats were predicted to be 7th, while Northern Illinois was predicted to be 10th. Bobcats 500 right now, Northern Illinois 0 and 11. Is a swing and a miss there from number 25, Mason Kelly, and he'll work his way back into the dugout for a strikeout there for Edward Cutt. That's his fifth strikeout of the day. It's Edward Cutt working now. Usually he, like we said, Coral doesn't average a ton of walks. More of a strikeout guy more than a walk guy. So now we've got two down here. Stepping into the box is Jack Blazevich. Another pickoff attempt, and I think he got Peters, and that he did. Great move by Edward Cut, and he'll save his arm for more pitches as that will be out number three, and Malik Peters got picked off right there, and that'll be the end of the top of the fourth. You are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network.
Welcome back here to Bob Wren Stadium. We're in the bottom of the fourth here. It's Kyle Seabach still dealing up there on the mound for Northern Illinois. Besides the crooked, crooked numbers up there in the first inning, it's been a pitcher's duel ever since then as both Kyle Seabach and Edward Cut the fourth for Ohio have been dealing back and forth besides giving up some runs there in the first is now stepping into the bop box for the Bobcats is number two as that ball is put into play up high a little bit of a into no man's land but it'll be caught out there by the shortstop Andre Dimitrov as that'll be a pop out there for number number two Colin Casper Bauer as now stepping into the plate for the Bobcats is Spencer Harbert, who put a ball over the right field fence his last at-bat for a three-run jack. Honestly, for Seaball, that's the only bad pitch he's had all game long. Yeah, it's probably that pitch that he left over the heart of the plate there to Harbert. Is another one left right over the heart of the plate to Harbert, and he'll make it a 2-2 day so far as he'll hit a rocket single right up the gut. And he'll be on first base here for the Bobcats. Is now stepping into the box. Is number eight, Michael Richardson, playing second base on the day. Harbert, for somebody coming in batting 125, has seen the ball really well today. Yes, yes, he is. I agree with that. Carl, is, he'll definitely be improving his slugging and OPS numbers after today. And his average numbers at that is two for two on the day to start this afternoon. Seabach comes set at the belt here once again. He'll kick and deliver to the plate, and that'll be a ball low. One O count here to Michael Richardson. Three two your score here. We're in the bottom of the fourth. So kicking deliver taking off there is number four Harbert, and he'll get in standing up at second base, and that'll be a stolen base for Spencer Harbert. That'll be his second on the year. That was just a good pitch to go on. It was low and away. Yes, it was, and Seabach wasn't keeping him tight over there at first either, Carl. Combs had no shot once the pitch got that back to him. Seabach will come set at the belt, checks the runner there at second. He'll deliver to the plate, swing and foul off there from number eight, Michael Richardson. 2-1 count here for Richardson, got one down here in the bottom of the fourth, got a duck out there on the pond at second base here for the Bobcats, trying to strike again and extend their lead. Definitely want insurance, especially after that Kentucky game when the Bobcats got out to a little bit of a big lead and then kind of Lost that lead down the stretch as Seabach will deliver, and that ball will get past Combs, and that'll be, a, I would say, a pass ball right there on Combs as he just kind of kind of biffed that one. Not sure what happened there. I don't think he was looking for a pitch well, that far out. Yeah, I don't th we'll, we'll look for confirmation from the official scorekeeper. I'd score that a wild pitch. I mean, it was a little high. It was a little yeah. out. It was It looked like kind of like a pitch out, honestly. It looked like a pitch that uh, would be a, a typical pitch out if you're – Trying to sit there, but I think maybe they mixed up the signals is what it was. Yeah. Is they're having a little bit of a meeting now out at the mound. I, I'd imagine that's what that was. I mean, he was expecting something low, and instead he got something high and wide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think a wild pitch would actually probably be best there, Carl, the way we described it after talking it over. But nonetheless, it'll be a 3-1 count here to Michael Richardson. Seabach will come set at the belt. He'll kick and fire to the plate, and that'll be a... Ball, they'll check over to the first base umpire. He did not go with the check swing, and that'll be a walk there for Michael Richardson. As now stepping to the plate, number 50, Kale Baker, the first baseman, will try to convert here. Got runners at the corners here for Baker. That was the first walk of the day for NIU. Yes, it was. I'm Besides the hit-by-pitch there in the first inning, yeah, that was the first official base on balls this afternoon for Seabach. As now, like we said, runners at the corners here. On third base is Spencer Harbert, and on first will be Michael Richardson. Seabach comes set at the belt. He'll kick and fire, running off to second base. A fake throw there from Combs, and getting in safely with a slide is number eight, Michael Richardson, with a stolen bag there. That will be his first on the season. Richardson out of Cambridge, Maryland. He's a redshirt senior. Suddenly looking like a very promising inning for the Bobcats here, and we're going to have a meeting here at the mound. There's no call time. 
as pitching coach Josh, Josh Pethel will make a visit out there and try to get Seabach back under under rest right here. Correction, make sure that he's dialed in right here. He's, he's had some issues with finding the zone now as he's one, got a 1-0 count here to Kale Baker. As we've said, Baker out of Gahanna, Ohio, another Central Ohio product. Got a couple of those here in this Bobcats team. Got a couple guys from Gahanna, a couple guys from the Powell Lewis Center area up there in Olin Tangy School District. I know personally from my playing days from the Central Ohio area myself, I know that both of those baseball programs are pretty solid up there, Carl, so definitely putting out some good products. It's impressive uh, how good all those baseball teams are considering, what, there's four schools up in yeah, Olentangy. Uh, up in Olentangy, yeah, you've got Berlin, you've got Olentangy, you've got Liberty, and you've got Orange all up there. One of the fastest growing places in the entire country up there, just north of Columbus. So now Seabach will get his sign, so come set, kicks, fires at the plate, that'll be a ball out and up to Kale Baker. As Northern Illinois starting to get a little bit of movement out there in the bullpen. Not too much. Nobody's warming up, but it looks like some guys are up and rolling. As firing once again is Seabach, and that'll get in there for a strike. 2-1 count now for Kyle Seabach. Both these teams are tied in hits right now. Both have three here so far this afternoon. 2-1 count here for Kale Baker. Seabach comes sets to the belt. A turn kick, fires, and a swing and a miss there from Baker. 2-2 two -two count now. One down here, something in the grass, I would say, scores two. As the center fielder, Matt Barnes, is shading to his right center gap, the right center gap, that is, out there near the scoreboard. As they'll call time here, stepping out of the box is Baker, trying to recollect himself. Seabock comes set at the belt. Kicks and fires to the plate. That'll be a ball up and out. Ball three right there. Count runs the full. Looks like Northern Illinois is trying to cut this down, playing in front of the runners now. Up on, if this would be a grass field, up where the grass is. Grass infield, that meaning. So kick and fire once again. A ball up. And it will be foul. Looked like it had a little bit of some interesting spin on there. I thought it was going to get out of play, but it stayed in play. The wind also sort of maybe have had a factor here as it's blowing from south to north here from, as you see, from right to left field. More out to the left center field gap. Yeah, Kelly tried his hardest to yeah. run over there. I don't, I don't think he would have been able to get that one. I mean, it was a, a decent ways away almost toward the, um, almost toward the fence over there. But it had a little bit of some interesting spin and brought it back into play. Full count here once again for Kale Baker. Seabach comes, sets the belt, kicks, fires the plate, and that'll be a ball up and out, and ball four that is, and a walk. Second walk in a row there for Kyle Seabach. As Northern Illinois will... Uh, still nobody warming up there in the pen. And a little bit of movement. You got, you got two people out there. It looks like they're stretching a bit. You got two guys moving, and it looks like one of the catchers is going to go out there as well. As Seabach bases loaded, delivers, fires the plate, and a swing and a miss there from A.J. Roush, another Central Ohio product. A Liberty product. Yeah, one Tangy Liberty up there, like we talked about, Carl. Uh, is now here. Roush will step into the box. Oh, one one count. One down here. Seabach probably trying to roll a double play ball right here. Would be great to get him out of the inning. Kicks, fires to the plate. Ball fouled back from A.J. Roush. Found it back toward the on-deck circle there. A strikeout would do just as well. That's true. That is true. As Roush has worked himself into a whole 0-2 count right now. One down here in the bottom of the fourth. 3 2 your score in favor of the Bobcats. Seabach will kick and fire to the plate. Ball on the ground, foul. That's some good. Piece that up a little bit there was Roush. Like I said, if you can find anything out there in the grass and the green gets it down, it'll be a, it'll be smooth sailing for the Bobcats as that will definitely probably get at least two in as the outfielders are playing out there. I wouldn't say too deep, but deep enough, I'd say. Seabach kicks, fires to the plate. Ball in the dirt, but good stop there from Combs. Kept it in front. 
He's so got an aggressive base runner over there in Harbert. He's already got one stolen base while he's been on the bags this time. 1-2 count now for A.J. Roush. Bases loaded here for the Bobcats. Seabach will get his signs from Combs. Comes set at the belt, steps off now, regains himself. Wants to make sure he gets the right sign here. 1-2 count for A.J. Roush. Roush going for back-to-back -back games with an RBI. Got one on Wednesday against Kentucky. So now Seabach will get the signs. Kicks and fires at the plate, and that'll be a ball in. Good take there from Roush. Looked like a little bit of a back foot slider there. But it'll find its way into a dirt, or into the dirt, and into the glove of Combs. Kept it in front. It'll be ball. 2-2 two -two count now. Roush, a redshirt freshman outfielder, standing at 5'11". Kicks, fires, and a foul ball there. Good bit of a defensive hitting right there from A.J. Roush. Make sure to stay alive there. Foul it back. That's exactly what they teach you when you're younger. As Combs gets the signs from the dugout, Seabach now getting the signs from Combs. He'll come set at the belt. Bases loaded here for A.J. Roush. 2-2 count. Kicks, fires, delivers. Ball off the middle, and that'll be a base hit. Finds his way into center field. One run will come in. Rounding third will be the second run in an RBI. Two RBI single there for A.J. Roush. Piece that ball up right up the middle. And a good piece of hitting right there from A.J. Roush as Spencer Herbert and Michael Richardson will work their way across the plate. And the score now is 5-2 to two in favor of the Bobcats. Two RBI single. Great piece of hitting there from A.J. Roush. Now stepping into the box for the Bobcats is number three, Xavier Hindigas. Struck out first time up. Another ball in the grass. Might be able to score Kale Baker out there at second base. As a bunt attempt, Hindigas didn't get it, and Baker was a little bit almost halfway to third base there as he gets the signs. Might be another bunt attempt here from Xavier Hittigas. Seabach will come set at the belt. He'll kick and fire to the plate. That'll be a good piece of hitting. It'll get down to the left field. That'll be another base hit. Rounding third is Baker. He'll come around, and he will score. And getting to second base, an RBI double. Great piece of hitting there. Turned on an inside pitch from Seabach. Did Xavier Hindigas, and that'll be a double, RBI double with that. And that third now will be A.J. Roush as Baker comes across and scores there for the Bobcats. They're back at the top of their order for Isaiah Peterson, the center fielder for the Bobcats. He's 0 for 1 in the day with a walk. And OBP King at that, too. As now the score runs the 6 to 2 here in the bottom of the fourth is. The Bobcats might force Seabach out of the ball game after this inning as the ball goes high and in there for ball number one for Seabach. Struggling now here as we have worked our way further and deeper into this inning and Seabach working his pitch count up and up here as he's now at 63 as Seabach throws it up and that'll be a ball slicing toward out of play. Malik Peters tracking it down in left field and it'll work itself into the bullpen foul. Isaiah Peterson a little behind on that one. Let's see if he can time this one up here. As he'll work his way now back to the box. Two ducks out there on the pond, one at second, one at third. Still only one out. That's true. One ball, one strike, one out. Here in the bottom of the fourth. Bobcats lead the Huskies 6-2. to two. Seabach kicks, fires to the plate, check swing. Yes, he did go. That'll be strike number two. Peterson now into a hole, one-two count, another ball in the grass. Will likely be another two runs here for the Bobcats. As shading toward the, the left center field gap is Matt Barnes reading the wind as that ball will be low and away and a good block there from Scott Combs keeps that ball in front. A really good job sliding to his left there to get the block, as you said. Yeah, besides that one that went all the way to the backstop, that seemed to be a little bit of some miscommunication a little earlier, Carl. It seemed like Combs has been a solid 
solid wall behind the plate here this afternoon. And that, wa that was ruled a wild pitch. Yes, it, yes it was. Is that pitch will go up high for a ball, and now working the count full is Isaiah Peterson. As we said, he had a hit by pitch in his first at bat. He's an efficient hitter at that, I will say. Seven walks so far in the season. Leads the team in hits and runs as well. Kicks and fires. Seabach, that'll be ball low and away. Gets in the dirt and being aggressive. Coming to the home plate, and that'll be another run for the Bobcats. Aggressive running there from number seven, A.J. Roush. Read that ball in the dirt. Read the bounce perfectly. Worked himself. Slid right in head first into the bag. And that'll be another run for the Bobcats as Matt, correction, Scott Combs is kicking himself at that one, even though he did almost all that he could, kept the ball in front, slid to his knees. As now Northern Illinois is warming up. At least one arm out there. She looks to be a righty out in their pen. Now, I won't, I won't step on your toes there, Carl. Let's just say what you want to say. The most interesting thing about this inning has been that it's, Started with an out. Yes, it did. It started with a put out uh, short. Yes, it did. Casper Bauer. Casper Bauer is almost ready to bat again. Yeah, you're correct there, Carl. As Alex Finney steps in, and they've got a run down now out there at between first and second. Now coming to the plate, and that'll be an out at second, and another run for the Bobcats as thrown out on the base path is Isaiah Peterson. But reaching home is number three, Xavier Hendigas, and that's a perfect piece of strategy baseball right there to get. The runner between first and second into a rundown. Doesn't matter. All that matters is the run scoring is now. Northern Illinois has got two down. Bases are cleared now for number 15, Alex Finney, the DH. Coming set now is Seabach. He'll kick fire to the plate once again. That'll be a strike in there on the inner half of the plate. Good pitch there from Seabach as his count, pitch count, that is, keeps working higher and higher into this ball game. It's up to 68 pitches now. Seabach will kick and fire to the plate. Ball high. 1-1 one, one count now. Two down here in the bottom of the fourth. Bobcats lead Northern Illinois 7-2. to two. Kicks and fires to the plate. Ball low. Seabach just trying to find his groove. As like we said, Northern Illinois has a righty warming up out there in their pen. Seabach will come set, kicks, fires to the plate once again, ball out. Get that bat here. Number 15, Alex Finney, the DH. 0 for 2 on the ball game so far. Three one count here for Alex Finney. Seabach kicks, fires to the plate, works himself inside. That'll be ball number four and a walk. That's one thing that we talked about as well here, Carl. Besides that first batter hit by pitch in the first inning, Seabach limited his walks, limited the free base runners, and now he's walked We talked about three. that at the beginning of the inning. Four. Hey, it is four. That's his fourth walk of the inning. Yeah, you are, you are right about that one. This four walks here on the inning is now stepping into the box is Mason Minzy playing behind the dish this afternoon. Finney at first. Seabach will come set at the belt. Kicks, fires the plate. It'll be a ball low, and taking off there is Finney. Throw down, and he'll get under the tag as Combs didn't recover in time, and that'll be a stolen base there for number 15, Alex Finney. Yeah, Combs looked like he kind of uh, – Combs kind of looked like he fumbled the ball trying to get transfer it from glove to hand. If mm -hmm. he didn't fumble that, he probably would have had it. And that is Finney's first stolen base on the season. As 1-0 count here now for Mason Minzy. Another ball in the green will be another run for the Bobcats, likely. Pitch kit gets the inside corner right there, and Minzy's wondering where that is. Minzy's had a few interesting pitches called against him. He struck out in the first inning on a pitch we already talked about that just got the outside corner that, that was called quite late. That is true, and... The thing about Minzy is that he is uh, he is behind the dish, so he should know that, that strike zone very well, and that'll be a strike there looking. One-two count now for Mason Minzy. Worked himself into a hole. Seabach still dealing here. 8-2 your score. So kick and fire. Check swing. Yes, he did go. 
And that'll be strike number three for Mason Minzy. And that'll end the inning for the Bobcats. But they did make some noise. Put up a five spot in the bottom of the fourth. And they now lead Northern Illinois 8-2 to two here. You are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. Welcome back here to Bob Wren Stadium on the banks of the Hocking River in the shadow of the convocation here at Ohio University in beautiful Athens, Ohio. Sun has a gone away a little bit, Carl, and the wind's starting to pick up a little bit more as the temperature seems to drop here yeah, a little bit this it afternoon. Is, it is decidedly colder, uh, at least it feels like it here in our booth with the window open. It's still 60 degrees. See, uh, it must be good out there on the turf as... Strike one will go right there to Blazevich for Northern Illinois. Wind's 11 miles an hour, though, so that'll... That might have a bit of a factor there as a foul tip from Blazevich. So he now works himself into an 0-2 hole. Blazevich stretch, struck out his first time out on three pitches. We'll have a chance to maybe do that again right here. As cut, turn. Kicks and fires the plate, and that ball will be put into play out to Hendages at second base. In the gap, throws it off his back foot. It will not be in time, and that will be a base hit right there for number eight, Jack Blazevich. And that will be his first hit on the afternoon, the fourth hit for Northern Illinois so far. As the scores now run up to eight to two. After that big bottom of the fourth there for the Bobcats, as now stepping into the box here for Northern Illinois is Andre Dimitrov. Playing short this afternoon. Cut comes set at the belt. Kicks, fires. And that pitch will be right down Broadway for a strike number one. 0-1 oh one now your count. Over at first base now is Jack Blazevich. Dimitra on the box. Cut, kicks, fires. And that pitch is right down Broadway once again for strike number two. As Cuts done a good job of getting ahead in the count here to start this inning. As Edward Cut getting his signs now from his battery mate and catcher Mason Minzy. Checks the runner over at first, not a big lead at all. Cut comes set at the belt. He'll kick and fly to the plate. Ball below and tempting. Mason Minzy over there at first base was Jack Blazevich. Blazevich has not had a had a big had a big lead over there first base. Trying to be a little conservative, and rightfully so for Northern Illinois, is they need they need runs, they need base runners. This is the ball up out of second base. Richardson throws it over to second, and that'll be a double play. Four, six, three. Taylor made double play. Richardson hendages to Baker. And that's a huge double play right there. There's a great pitch from Edward Cut in on the hands right there to Dimitro as he squibbed that out to second base. Fielded well from Richardson to hendages. And over to first base, Baker. Second double play turned by the Bobcats today. Yeah, both of them. First one was a 6-4-3, and that one was a 4-6-3. As that will be a good pitch. Must have been low on that one. From Edward Cut. As now stepping into the box here is Eric Arado, the leadoff here for Northern Illinois. Arado so far 0 for 2 in the game, as he'll get a bunt. It'll be in play. 
And that will be an out right there. I'm not sure. I think it, I think it hit him outside of the box. I, I think that's what that that is what happened now is skipper Mike Kunigonis comes to the plate to talk that one over with with the umpiring crew. Ohio's already left the field. And that that they have they're still gathered over there outside their dugout now, but. It, it it definitely hit Arado. Arado was it did just hit him. You could see you could see his right foot. Around. Yeah, you could see him hobbling over there on that uh, that left foot. That was. I don't know how it would have hit his back foot though. From a, I mean, it hit him. And it looks like. Yep. They're gonna confirm it. That is out number three there. Hit Arado out of the box. And that will be, the end of the top of the fifth. Score is 8-2 to two in favor of the Bobcats. You are listening to Ohio Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. Welcome back here to Bob Wren Stadium as Northern Illinois is making a pitching change. He's number 19. We don't have him on their roster anywhere. Has entered the ball game here for Northern Illinois. They didn't even announce it over the PA. So That is true. Is that ball there to – is inside for ball number one. That almost hit him. Yeah, it did. Ran a little in right there. The ball will be put into play by number two, Colin Casper Bauer, into the left center field gap, and that will be a base hit down. It's a good hit there from Casper Bauer. So get involved with this ball game is now stepping to the plate as number four, Spencer Harbor. Two for two on the day with a single and a three-run jack so far this afternoon. As I don't believe even our official statisticians have a number or a name on number 19 for Northern Illinois. So he is the one up on there uh, on the mound. Is good off-speed pitch right there for a strike. As Herbert now down 0-1 of the count. Over at first is Colin Casper Bauer. Another off-speed pitch, and that, that ball will be lifted out to left center field, going back at the wall, and that one will be gone as well. Another home run there for number four, Spencer Harbert. See you later, baseball. Two-run jack there from Spencer Harbert, and that will extend the Bobcats' lead, and Harbert's got two pitches so far this afternoon. Every single one he's hit. Been right over the heart of the plate. The first one that went out to right center field was a fastball right over the center of the plate. The second one he poked out to center field for a base hit was right over the center of the plate. And that pitch right there, right across the middle of the plate. And that ball will be put out over the left field fence for a two-run jack. 
Even with that single, he scored a run in every single time he's been at bat. A great afternoon so far for Spencer Harbor. Now three for three on the day with two home runs, five ribbies, and a single. That's ball one in there to Michael Richardson. Playing second on the afternoon. Pitch low and in once again now. As we still don't have an official official name or number on number 19 out there for Northern Illinois. He is the one up on the mound. So he'll turn, kick, and fire. That'll be a strike on the inner half of the plate. Well, so if they don't know your name, they can't charge you for runs. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good way to put it there, Carl. I mean, he has given up two here and still has yet to record an out. That'll be a ball low. 3-1 count. As Northern Illinois still got some other guys moving up there in their pen. We're already here in the bottom of the fifth. That ball will be in there for a ball, ball low, and that'll be a, a five-pitch walk there for Michael Richardson. Still work his way down to first base, and struggling so far out there is big number 19. Second straight walk for Richardson. He walked last inning as well. That is true. It's kind of falling apart here for Northern Illinois. They came into the bottom of the fourth only trailing three two since then yeah and that that's something to note here about run. about northern illinois so far this season is like we said their own 11 but i mean e uh, every single game that they played they've either been within four runs or they have lost games by eight plus so and right now they're in the eight plus categories that will be a ball one there for northern illinois because i believe we're still trying to get a name and a face on number 19 out there up on the mound for the Huskies. So come set at the chest. He'll kick and fire and a swing and a miss there from number 50, Kale Baker. One more correction. Oh, one count now. Ten to two is your score in favor of the Bobcats. That lead was once again extended this half inning as Spencer Harbert put a ball over the left field fence. And taking off right there is Merritt Richardson. They throw it to second base, and he'll be caught stealing out there as he tried to catch number 19, the pitcher out there, napping. Second caught stealing of the day for the Bobcats. That is true. The first one was kind of intentional, though. And that'll be Richardson's second caught stealing on the season. He had a, he had a stolen base earlier in the ball game, but he's now one for three on the season. As that ball will be a strike on the outer half of the plate. One down now, 2-2 two -two count for Kale Baker at the plate. Still trying to figure out, like we said, a name and a face on the pitcher. I think we've got a name now as it's, uh, according to our statisticians, it is Mason Ruhr out there. He must have changed his number on our, on our, on our rosters up here. We have him down at 17. He's a freshman. And Milwaukee, Wisconsin, standing six feet four tall. I mean, he matches that description. He's a big old righty out there. 2-2 two -two count for Ruhr. I think that got a little bit of Baker, but it must have somehow missed him. It was <laughs> close that there. It was really close. It was really close. It looked like I saw a little, little bit of movement in the jersey there of Baker. but ba Baker didn't make any movement to no, see him like he was ready to go. No, he so. didn't. As counts full, and that will be a ball high. and Or no, now counts full. I thought it was full right there. I guess I was wrong. It was 2-2 right there. Now it's full. For Kale Baker. We believe to be Mason Ruhr out there on the mound. Turns, kicks, and fires the plate ball way skied, way up in an elevator shaft. I don't know if it'll stay in place. It's coming back now. And a great play there by catcher Scott Combs. He'll track that one down, and that'll be out number two for the Huskies. This inning is now stepping to the plate. Will be number seven, A.J. Roush, the right fielder for the Ohio Bobcats. Our correction, now now we're getting confirmation that we don't, we, uh, no, yeah, it, is, it, is, it is, it is, it is, it is Mason. Mason Ruhr out there on the mound. He's had two appearances coming before this game for the Huskies. As that'll be a ball low there for Roush. And in those two appearances for Mason Ruhr, he has not given up a single run. Uh, he has had two strikeouts, and he's pitched a total of three innings. Well, he's given up a run now. Yeah, that is that is true there, Carl. As that ball run inside, I thought that got Roush. Almost did. Ball two there. 2-0 count to A.J. Roush. 
Two down here in the bottom of the fifth. Bobcats putting up two on the board in this half inning. Off of a two-run blast from Spencer Harbert. So that will be a ball wall once again. And like we talked about, Carl, about Harbert, he was coming into this game, he was a 125 hitter. Average, his average was 125. And, you know, I mean, he has a, has a high OPS for a 125 at 542, and that will definitely be going up after this game this afternoon. Turn, kick, and fire again. That will go right down Broadway for a strike. 3-1 now the count. It's A.J. Roush. Mason Rur turns, kicks, and fires to the plate. That will be a strike there once again right down Broadway. Full count now. Two down here in the bottom of the fourth for A.J. Roush. Maybe Rur was just worried about not hearing his name called. He settled in after we figured out who that he is. That is true as that ball is skied toward the right side of the infield by A.J. Roush. Camped under his Kelly. No, now his second baseman for Northern Illinois will make the catch into the glove of Jack Blazevich. And that will be out number three for the Northern Illinois Huskies. The Bobcats got two early runners that inning from a single off of Colin Casper Bauer and then a two-run blast from Spencer Harbert, and then went 1-2-3 in the order, and that'll be the end of the fifth inning with a score of 10-2 in favor of the Ohio Bobcats. You are listening to Ohio Bobcats Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. Welcome back here to Bob Wren Stadium in Athens, Ohio, here on this Friday afternoon for the first game of a doubleheader between the Ohio Bobcats and the Northern Illinois Huskies. We're here in the top of the six now, stepping into the box here for Northern Illinois is number two, Matt Barnes. His cut Ooh. stays in the ball games, and that ball ran right inside. And I think it missed, somehow missed Barnes. As he, he scored to bunt. I think it hit off. I think it hit off Menzi and then hit the hit the home plate umpire behind him. I think mean, somebody looked like it. I mean, the ball the ball stayed somebody. around the plate. It didn't go to the backstop. His cut will get a strike right there. As now the Bobcats have a righty working out in their pen. Cuts pitch count up to 68 now, and a good pitch there, but a little high. Says so the home plate umpire two one the count. So Matt Barnes playing center. Good defensive center fielder that is. As Barnes has read a couple balls really well out there today, I will say, as that pitch will go. Try to frame it with Minzy, but it'll be too far out. So the home plate umpire, 3 1 your count now. To Matt Barnes in the box. Cut, turns, kicks, and fires, and that pitch will be right down Broadway for a strike. And already walking to first base was Barnes. And he'll have to walk right back to the to the box. The home plate umpires love doing that today. Oh, yeah. It's been, it's been left and right here today, it seems <laughs> like. I mean, to be fair, to be fair though, I mean, he's been consistent on when he's been calling those. Is there's a hit. That it is. Ball in play to Hen Hendigas, as that will be a 6-3 out right there. Ground out for Matt Barnes. One down now for the Bobcats is now stepping into the box. For Northern Illinois is number 22, Aaron Harper. Harper is 0 for 1 on the day with a walk. Playing a hot corner this afternoon. Scored, scored in the first inning on that walk. Yes, he did. The last run mm -hmm. for Northern Illinois. Yes, today. he was. As that was a good first pitch there from Edward Cut, but a little, little low, says home plate umpire. As Cut agrees with him there, it must have been just been a little low. One of the count now. To Harper, cut, turns, kicks, and fires. That pitch is right down the gut for a strike right there. 1-1 one, one now the count. Cut's been really meticulous, and I think something that might play a part in that is he enjoys bonsai trees. 
Interesting fact right there, Carl. Okay. Have, have you ever have you ever done a bonsai tree before? I've never done one, but I've definitely seen them before. His cut has another strike, swinging strike there. One, two, your count. I'll let you continue talking about it in his bonsai tree. I mean, I mean, you have to sit there and you have to make sure it grooms to make sure it grows the correct way. It's very meticulous process, so I've heard. I don't have the patience for it. But Seems like uh, he's uh, must yeah, just be an Edward Cut thing because I mean he's very, very like he said meticulous up there on the mound, painting those corners. And I guess he must be just m meticulous in everything he does. Is now he'll throw a great pitch there on the outer half of the plate, but the umpire will say it's just a little off. As the count runs the full, I thought that was that was strike number three, but it must have been a little too far off the plate there. As cut now, full count. Gardening, gardening might help baseball careers. True, and that will be a check swing, and the home plate umpire will say, yes, he did, and that will be a strikeout there for Edward Cut as Aaron Harper will go down. Sixth strikeout of the day for Cut. Yeah, hey, there goes his strikeout numbers, and Edward Cut, he's had a good start. I'd say quality start, gave up those two runs, two, correction, two runs in the first inning, and besides that, he's been perfect. Both those, both those were walks. After that, he's only had one walk. As a little bit of a check swing there from Scott Combs right back to cut, and he'll throw over to Kale Baker for out number three. And that'll be the end of the top of the sixth inning. Edward Cut dealing here at Bob Wren. 10-2 to two your score, and you are listening to Ohio Bobcats Baseball on the Ohio Sports Network. Welcome back here to Athens, Ohio. Here at Bob Wren Stadium here for Ohio baseball. The opening series, opening game, opening home game that is, for the Bobcats and the opening of the MAC play here as they've got a doubleheader here this afternoon. And you're in game one right now, bottom of the sixth, as they take on the Northern Illinois Huskies. As stepping to the box now for the Bobcats as number three, the shortstop Xavier Hendigiz. As up there on the mound for Northern Illinois, we have confirmed it is to be number 19, Mason Ra. We thought he was on our rosters, and what we received was 17, but he's 19 today. As he's a freshman, standing 6 feet 4 tall. 4 inches, that is. As he's a right-handed pitcher, and that pitch went way inside and almost got Hendigas right there. As he kind of face-planted right there into the turf and tried to avoid getting hit right in the mouth. Let's run now. One of the count to Hendigas. Ruck kicks and fires, and the ball put on the ground. Great diving play there. And the ball will be thrown across the field, but it will not be in time. It was a great diving stop there from the third baseman, Aaron Harper. But his throw not nearly in time. Is that will be a, an infield single right there for Xavier Hendigas. About the only guy who can make that play is Manny Machado. Great job, oh, Matt left. Chapman. You're, you're sleeping on Matt Chapman, Carl. Matt Chapman, I I think could make that play. <laughs> either <laughs> either that way, play. either way, very few, very few third basemen can make right. that play. You're but right. Harper did a great job of stopping it, yeah. diving it, and keeping it from an extra base hit. Yeah, great extension there. Is now stepping to the box. The leadoff hitter Isaiah Peterson. His raw kicks, fires, good pitch right there, and that'll be a strike number one. A little bit of a 
hassling there from Peterson. Peterson so far in the afternoon, 0 for 1 with a walk. Got hit by pitch as well and, and scored in the yet. first inning. That is true, Carl. As Peterson gets on base a lot and Rowe, good slap shot right there, but it'll go foul for the left field line. From Peterson, count now runs to 2 Rowe up here and on first base is Xavier Hendigans. Got himself a base hit. Infield single with that. Cloud cover is really increased. Yeah, it seems like the wind's also starting to pick up here as well as the ball fouled back right there from number five, Isaiah Peterson. Like we've talked about, Carl, this is a doubleheader here, the back opener for both of these teams and the home opener for the Ohio Bobcats. We have the pleasure of calling this game here this afternoon. But, I mean, the reason that they changed the schedule up a little bit and we have a doubleheader today instead of a doubleheader tomorrow is we've got some snow on the way and they are trying to get this ball game in as Ruzz pitch right down the heart of the plate, and that'll be a strikeout looking for Isaiah Peterson. Great pitch there from Mason Ruh. I think they moved the, I think this was scheduled doubleheader. They moved, they, there's two doubleheaders this weekend. I think that it's Sunday doubleheader, the Sunday doubleheader now. Yeah, that, that is true. What was supposed to happen, I believe, this weekend was there was supposed to be a game. There was two, supposed game, to be two games Friday, one, game Saturday. I think it was just one game Friday, two games Saturday, and then one on Sunday to finish this four-game set, and they switched it to be the doubleheader today and the doubleheader Sunday to make sure they can get all four of these games in. And that'll be a first, trick, first pitch strike looking there to Alex Finney. And Finney so far 0 for 2 on the day. Do you ever play baseball in the snow? Yes, I have, Carl. Uh, being from Ohio myself and being from the central Ohio region in Mar late March, I have definitely played a couple high school baseball games in the snow. I, I would say about at least three to four. It reminds me a lot of um, – Last year, uh, opening day between the Tigers, I believe, Tigers and uh, and Cleveland, Cleveland last year. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was snowing up there in Detroit. And there's no two count here for Mason Rudd delivering to Alex Finney and a pitch skied up the elevator shaft. Looks like it might come back. And a sliding grab and it catches. <laughs> now tagging is number three, Hennigis, and the slide safe. He'll slide under the tag there as he'll tag up on that little elevator shaft shot. But what a catch, sliding catch that was there by Scott Combs. He's, he's made two of those now today. Yeah, he is. Scott Combs, honestly, Show very, very impressed from his, his defense, showing the leather behind the dish. Showing the mobility. Oh, yeah, that too. That too. As usually you don't think a catcher is the fastest guys in the world. Uh, I mean, usually they're good at moving the ball, good at keeping the ball in front and being a wall. I mean, great work behind the dish there for Scott Combs. As now we've got a runner on second base here. For Colin, Ca or correction, I believe we have. Minzy. Oh, yeah, Minzy will be here at the box. Switch hitting Minzy. That is, as that ball skied way high, it'll be kind of in no man's land between the short stop and the right, uh, center fielder, but it'll be f into the glove of Matt Barnes, and that will be out number three. Is Yes, that was Minzy. He is a switch hitting player for the Bobcats, and that'll be the end of the sixth inning. Score still 10-2 to two in favor of the Ohio Bo Bobcats. You are listening to Ohio Bobcats baseball on the Ohio. Sports Network.
Welcome back here to Athens, Ohio for the home opener for the Ohio Bobcats. Uh, still out there on the mound is Edward Cutt. And now stepping into the box for Northern Illinois is number 27, Carlos Aranda. Pinch hitting right now. He's out of the Dominican Republic, Santo Domingo down there. And that'll be a strike number one in there to Aranda. Aranda's a junior outfielder standing at six feet. One inch is tall. That's righty, throws righty, and then another good pitch there from Cut. And that's one thing that I've been impressed from Cut ever since that first inning is he's been getting ahead in counts. I mean, I'd say he's got ahead of most of his batters here late in this ball game as Aranda. Another pitch to him. That'll be a swing and a miss and a three-pitch strikeout there from Edward Cut. Still dealing here deep into the seventh of this ball game, and we'll definitely make sure to stay here in the seventh for the seventh inning stretch. That is and. Now here stepping into the box, another pinch hitter, Brandon Johnson. Sophomore outfielder standing at 5 foot 11 inches tall as Cut will deal. Pitch low and in for a ball. Johnson out of Rochelle, Illinois. He's a lefty-lefty. As Cut turns, kicks, and fires and fouled back there from Johnson. Johnson's only had four at-bats this entire season. This is his fifth. He's a total of one for four. 250. He's a 750 OBP guy so far to start this season. As that ball will be chopped foul once again, working himself into a hole is Brandon Johnson. Johnson has one hit, one RBI, that one hit being a triple. So, I mean, that's something pretty impressive. I'll say that. Or correction, 750 slugging percentage. My, my apologies on that stat line right there. As that is chopped in front of the plate, fielded well by Menzi as he'll throw it on to Baker at first and that'll be a ground out a two three ground out at that for Brandon Johnson as now stepping into the box for Northern Illinois another substitution here Paxton Kennedy a senior out of Men Mendota Illinois Mendota N M uh, correction Mendota Illinois is that pitch there from cut right down the heart of the plate uh, you strike again there for Edward cut Kennedy, as we said, a senior, standing six feet four inches tall. As Cut will deliver a little sidearm action right there from Edward Cut. We'll go back. As a swing and a miss right there from Paxton Kennedy. As Cut turns, kicks, and fires. Chopped over to third. Foul ball there. As Edward Cut still dealing up there on the mound. He's gone six and two thirds so far. One two count here to Kennedy. Cut turns, kicks, and fires. That ball is fouled out of play toward the third baseline there from Paxton Kennedy. Kennedy's putting up a good fight for coming cold off the bench. That is true. Kennedy so far in the season is hitting 091. Got a 389 OBP and an 091 slugging percentage. That totals a 480 OPS so far to start the season. Three RBIs, one hit, and two runs on the season. Cut, turns, kicks, and fires again. Ball put in the play. Out of the second baseman, Richardson. He'll field it around the grass, throw it over to Baker at first base. And that will end the first half of this doubleheader this afternoon as the Ohio Bobcats will catch the W in this first game as they have two games this afternoon. That's the first game of the doubleheader, first game of the set, first game of the series, and the home opener goes to the Bobcats. A great game from the Ohio Bobcats this afternoon. Edward Cutt will be your winning pitcher for the Bobcats. Went all seven innings, had a complete game there. Besides the first putting up a crooked two, that is, only gave up four hits this afternoon and a great day for Edward Cut as Northern Illinois will fall there once again. Bobcats improved to six to five. Northern Illinois falls to 0 and 11. 12. 0 and 12, correction. <laughs> My bad on that one, Carl. Yeah, you're good. My bad on that one is make sure to stick around and stick. make sure to keep an eye on the second stream as we'll have game two and Carl and I will be switching positions here as they'll have the play-by-play -play and I'll have the color for game two. But uh, for now, we'll step away for just, just a little bit and we'll come back and read you off a little bit of some post-game stats, so make sure to stay tuned. Or correction, we'll wrap it up right here. We'll keep it short and, short and quick after that. Yeah. 
that ball game from the Bobcats. I'll turn it over to you, Carl. Looks like you've got some stats over there. Yep. So the line scores Ohio with scoring 10 runs on eight hits. Northern Illinois with two runs on four hits. No errors uh, for the Bobcats. For the Bobcats, hitting-wise, the guy that I thought had a great day was Spencer Harbert. Went three for three on the day, had two home runs, drove in f five RBIs. Yeah, it's easy to have a pretty good day when you uh – <laughs> have two home runs. Have two two home, home runs. runs. Yeah, I mean, every single pitch that Harbert got that he hit today was right over the heart of the plate, and he definitely made the Huskies pay. Is That's another thing about the Huskies is they walked into this game, like we talked about, Carl, their earned run average of 10.29 ranked ninth in the MAC, and, uh, you know, that's not, not a great team ERA as the Bobcats walked into this game with their – Team ERA hovering around 469, which is best for or good for second in the MAC. But I mean, if you're giving up two that game, I just gotta say I'm impressed by the Bobcats. Edward Nut, or correction, Edward Cut had a great game overall here in, in, in this in this first uh, first game. That is, I mean, he pitched a gem, I'd say. Besides that first inning, kind of struggled with some walks here and there. Uh, but besides that, he came in, locked it down, got a couple key double play balls there. Had a 6-4-3 early on in the game and had a 4-6-3 a little bit later in the game in the Ohio Bobcats. You know, very impressed for their performance here in the first game of this afternoon. Um, yeah, going into the second, I mean, you do, you know, make sure you have Harbert. Make sure he stays going here in the second game. But I'll turn it over to you, Carl. Yeah, cut with the seven strikeouts. And so another thing is it is a doubleheader. That's true. No bullpen. Yeah, no the bullpen. Bobcats in the did first, not need to game. use their bullpen. And, I mean, it's it's – they had they used four players out of the bullpen on Wednesday's game against Kentucky. That against is. Kentucky, so I mean it's nice to give your bullpen a little bit of a rest, not using game one, and then just be able to have it like be a single game. You got a day of rest tomorrow, so especially a four game set. You know you're playing two games a doubleheader today, like we talked about, and two games on Sunday. That's a doubleheader. You want to make sure you have all your arms fresh and ready to roll this entire week, and especially in some of this colder weather, not super cold yet but the temperatures will probably drop as we get later and later on in the afternoon to this ball game. As we're going to wrap it up here from Bob Wren Stadium. Make sure to stick around for the second broadcast of the second game here for the home opener for the Ohio Bobcats as they take this one 10-2 over the Northern Illinois Huskies. For my colleague Carl Blaylock, I'm Cade Williamson signing off.